Alright, so it is time for me to get started on the Primal RC Raminator, the most powerful RC motor and ESC in the world! Yes, in the last uh, episode we had a look at the MGM combo and the leaner motor that I got. Uh, it is in the background. It is absolutely phenomenal. This thing is a giant. Somebody said, put this into your axial rift. I think that's a great idea. As you can see, we could probably fit it like right, well, it would have to hang out the back. But you know what I'm saying? Here's a travel mug of coffee, if that, if that helps. That's a good one, hey? The Leaner Censored 3100 Brushless Censored Motor is going to be going into this today. I know I'm taking too much time, but a lot of people have never seen this, including me at the time of this filming, and it's absolutely insanity. This is my speed controller, guys. If you missed the last episode, 20 capacitors, 1,000 amps, peak, continuous, 800 amps, continuous. I even ordered some go-kart tires for today. Or I ordered them today, I should say. Because I have a feeling that the Raminator tires that are as huge as my head, literally, and a lot of people say I've got a big head. <laughs> Just ask around. And I got the Johnny Crash Racing brand new. He designed it for me. And for everybody else in the world now too, if you guys end up getting the 800 amp, to slap it in here. But first thing I gotta do, remove the engine. People are like, why did you keep your trail truck black and blue? Why do you have this one blue and black? I don't know. This works. This are this is the clutch shoe. Uh, these are the clutch shoes with the clutch springs. Uh, as this rotates and spins very quickly, the clutch uh, shoes expand based on your spring rating. Of course, all the exhaust. You guys can check out how an engine works if you don't know. But those clutch shoes expand against this inner clutch bell. This clutch bell rotates and actually spins the pinion on the duplex chain to the bottom. And so then that spins the whole transmission and the drive shafts. You can see in here when the engine's not in, the drive shaft, the transmission, and the other drive shaft are all still in place, keeping it separate. So all I have to do is use a uh, number nine on the outside wrench and then just remove the screw on the inside to remove that clutch bell. Okay, so we can have a look at one of the pieces that is required that I took off with the engine. But I want you guys to pay attention to the uh, mounting holes because this is underneath the engine. And then we have this beautiful uh, piece of aluminum here that I'm going to remove. You can see I started to remove. That's going to go back in here across. A, uh, there's a hole right here and a hole right here. So it's going to be a cross member right there and you'll see why. Remember you want to slide it gently over the tip careful not to disturb or anything. It's got some rubber seals on the inside and right there. I won't tighten up that set screw yet until I'm ready to mount it but now it's ready for the front piece. Okay so there is the pinion sh uh, shaft or the pinion shaft adapter I should say. The pinion shaft adapter carrier is right here with four bolts, one, two, three, four, they're just sitting in there right now, sticking through. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you look over here on the motor, ba boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do you think of that motor shaft, eh? 10 mils, guys. That is a 10 millimeter shaft. Here is my screwdriver handle. Like, ridiculous. 10 mil shaft. Dun, dun. This is basically sitting how I'm feeling exactly right now. Boom, 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 boom. Just going to go ahead and line this up here. 
It's so nice. Okay, and a few minutes later, I now have the motor in its mount. This one is a little bit different. It's the 10 millimeter shaft, as I had mentioned previously. The most important thing is to make sure that right here is flush between the two. The, the, right before I put the uh, bearing in here, you gotta make sure it's flush uh, for it to actually work. And as you cinch this down, uh, this ring actually goes over this motor and if you don't have it in the right spot, good luck. So you gotta actually put the set screw or the grub screw in there first and then you're able to uh, put it on there. That's crazy. What a motor. Aha, uh -huh. this is why these builds aren't for everybody. You gotta have some sort of mechanical aptitude. Not saying that I do. I just happened to stumble upon something that'll probably change by the time you guys, uh, if you are doing this exact build, uh, will be changed. But for example, because this is the first one, you'll see the tolerance on this motor and fitment is absolutely mind boggling. And it's actually now countersunk in here for about a quarter inch. The thing that I was running into is that when I went to turn the motor shaft, you can hear, that's not a big deal, a little bit of a squeak in there, not too bad though. One of the things I was noticing is that the screws that come with this kit are actually slightly too long and because this is the 3100, it's got the internal cooler on it as well. You can see that fan system. What was going on was when I was cinching it up, it was just a little bit too long and pushing into the uh, self-cooling system. So I went with a screw that's just slightly shorter. Uh, it still grips on well, doesn't have a whole lot of bite, but enough bite because this is sunk way in. Now, one of the things I noticed about this motor, I thought for sure if I had the 90 degree uh, cables on here, that this would fit. But, dun, 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 dun. let's look at this first dry fitment here, okay, for you guys to look at. When I bring this in, I don't have the back on, I had to take it off there, and I fit this, look at that amazing motor, it still comes out the side a bit. That means it's going to hit this side face plate no matter what. So I'm gonna to have to either cut out this section, which is typical. A lot of us do this on this actual model of truck. A lot of you are like, if I paid that much money, I wouldn't be cutting it because it looks like a skull and looks pretty damn awesome. But I should have done it earlier. It would have made it a lot easier for me. If you look at this one, I've already done it. You see, you cut it out. This is the other electric conversion by Fine Designs that I have in there. A much smaller motor, 400 kV motor, uh, but way more affordable choice. And this is what I use for my trail truck. But by simply cutting this out, will give us way more access and allow those wires to come out on the side. So I think that... So on the speed controller, there's two holes, and on the other side, those same two holes, the fans, and of course, look at here, got the plate back into position. I've been mucking around with this for literally hours. But that's why I even do this hobby to pass the time and to have a good experience overall. I just take my time, make sure that it's done right. The lower and the upper suspension links are now in. The motor is completely secure. I made sure to put in the two carrier bearings for the duplex chain and then I greased it heavily on the inside of the duplex sprocket there. So as it turns, it'll help uh, distribute the oil or the grease. And then of course help keep that chain a little cooler as we're ripping with top speed speeds that those chains really were never designed for. But this is exactly why I decided to do this because of the duplex chain in there is going to help. Now look at this beautiful piece from Johnny Crash Racing. This top bar, the thickness of it compared to a stock one, for example, look at this. The density measurement is ridiculous, right? 
So the brilliance of this is it's actually going to carry the ESC above. See, everyone's been wondering, how's it going to work? But it goes into the stock holes that are there. We're actually going to carry the ESC in between these four screws because of the holes on the ESC. Aha! Uh -huh. So, because uh, MGM puts this 3D mounted plate on here, I'm going to have to unscrew it from the bottom. That's okay, it's got the on off switch here, but I'll actually put that somewhere else. I couldn't get this to fit. That's okay though. Fuck it, I'm going to remove the on off switch now because I really, they were like the biggest failure point on any ESC. I'm just going to attach these and make it into a jumper. Let us take a moment to truly appreciate what we're looking at here. It is properly mounted. The ESC could basically run a full-size car. Here's the jumper. Batteries are going to be towards the back. I'm going to sandwich it in between these two plates. Oh my god, it's so sexy already. Dang. Lining it up properly. Ha 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 ha. There it is. Mount it up where it should be. Now I'm going to start putting in the battery plate. So I've already put in these two mounts onto the existing bar. There's another bar that goes right in here. I got to put the two mounts on it for this beautiful JCR carbon fiber battery tray. It's time I get to put this piece on. Everything is not wired or hooked up yet. Uh, in fact, I see some things because I have the very first Primal RC Raminator to have this setup in it, I can see a few things that need to be changed already. Look at this, guys. It is now mounted up. You know, like, what is this jumble of wires? I get it. Here is the plate for the batteries, two batteries. I can run three batteries, as you can see. I've just got a jumper in here, so in case I want to run three, I have to do the wiring here. The other thing is, is that this harness wire does not reach the far side where the harness actually needs to sit. So that's a bit of a problem, because it's going to be uh, going into here. As well as these beautiful wires that I had are actually not even long enough to reach to where we're at. As you can see, they needed to be at least, you know, six to seven inches longer, but none of us were going to know that. I do have a 10 gauge and 8 gauge wire here. So I'm gonna have to uh, do that, but for the time being, it is almost dark outside. Dun, dun, dun. Well, it's getting towards dinner time, I should say. I'm gonna get that in place and put the wheels on and just have a look at it and appreciate it for what it is. See, my batteries came in. This one I opened. Is that the one I opened? Is that the one I opened? It's the last one, of course. Here are the 6S LiPos I brought in. Crazy ridiculous. I'm going to have to switch the ends on them to the QS8s. Man, I need to put this down just because these are so big. Ugh. Dudes. 6800 6S, 120C burst rating on these. So this truck is far from being ready to rip. Let me just reiterate that. I know everybody's excited. They want me to rip the fastest monster truck ever. But the way the truck is now, it is nowhere near ready. I've got to still bust apart the differentials. I'm going to put 20 million weight 
into the differentials so we can actually transfer the power uh, from the motor to the wheels because right now it's got a limited slip differential in the front and back. They're unlocked differentials. Um, which is great. I also need to put some proper go-kart tires on here, which means I've ordered the go-kart tires. It's going to be wider on the back, skinnier on the front, uh, just like a dually pretty much. Uh, and these are not foam tires. They are actual go-kart tires, but I have to have adapters made. Uh, the other thing is, is yes, we will start it up and run it around at a further time. Uh, but I still got to do the wiring. I got to get the brake system properly working because this has a disc brake system. Uh, and when I put this much money into a project, right, and we're talking upwards over one, two, three, four, five figures here, right, over five figures that I'm working with, I want to make sure to do it right. But here it is, guys. All that talking, all that worth today. What a beautiful, beautiful machine. I also want to get the one inch uh, extenders for the suspension links to make it an inch longer in wheelbase. The wider on the back, longer in the chassis, we'll be able to transfer more power to the tires again. It's rolling absolutely smooth. That motor in there, all you're hearing is some well, I didn't put the, the lugs on the tires. That's what you hear there. The tire's coming off, but everything's rolling along okay. Look at this, the X2 Series Pro 32-bit system. 1,000 amp burst rating. Here is the battery tray, all ready to rock and roll. I will make the wires longer as I have the right gauge here with me. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, 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 oh. You are truly a beast.